Well, welcome everyone. Uh, we're really thrilled to have you guys uh, join us today uh, for this engaging uh, session. Uh, my name is Michael. I will be your co-host for the webinar. During this webinar, we're going to be discussing operational excellence. Uh, my co-host Josh will be discussing understanding your bit. He will be discussing understanding your business and how to set your team and business up for success. Uh, whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting, this webinar is designed to provide you with actionable insights and practical tips that you can implement immediately. Before we begin, I'd like to say a quick thank you to you, Josh, uh, one of our partners with the, uh, at the Tradesman Experience, uh, for working hard to put this together and putting a powerful presentation together and making this webinar happen. If you guys have any questions, please put them in the chat or raise your hand at the bottom and we'll be happy to answer them. This will be interactive, so we'll look out for your questions and answer them as they come in. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Josh. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I'm going to flip up the, uh, the presentation here and we'll get rolling. Um, we're going to discuss the operational excellence today. And this is going to be a fairly interactive conversation, as Michael said, because I've got a lot of questions that I'm going to ask. Now, feel free to answer the questions if you want. If not, it's OK to at least answer them internally. And to kind of dive into operational excellence, you have to have a baseline understanding of you and your business. So let's talk about your business real quick. I already know that your business is a direct reflection of you, which means the things that you are good at, your business is really good at. And the things that you suck at, your business sucks at. And as technicians and tradesmen, we're not taught a lot of the things that surround and compound our skill. So we're not taught to hire. We're not taught how to build, develop, and implement systems. We're not taught to sell properly. We're not taught to lead. We're not taught to hire properly. Everything that we do in our business normally revolves around the skill itself. The other issue this causes is it's exactly how we manage other people. We manage our team based on our strengths and our experiences. And when we do that, we actually limit their capacity to be successful and we limit the opportunity for them to grow and learn and best complement not only our company, but our clients as well. So when you look at your business, that's something that you have to take in consider into consideration. And the objective is to build the business and build systems and people in areas of your weakness. And when you do that and you develop a team, that's how you have this compounding effect of positive growth and impacting the marketplace in a successful way. So five ingredients that every business must have. You have to have a product or a service. You have to have clients or market share. You have to have systems or systematic operation for the business. You have to have a team and you have to have revenue and profit. No business can survive without revenue and profit. And before you say, well, I don't have anybody, I'm a single owner operator, there's a different type of team that you need to have in your company. And these are the, this is the team that you have to have. Every company needs an attorney, a CPA, a banker, an insurance agent, and a bookkeeper. These five people behind the scenes, behind the curtain, will help you make strategic conversations that's going to set you up for success. These, these are really non-negotiables. You're gonna have a hard time building a successful company without these people on your team. These five people will help you elevate your business and become more successful. The first one being a field service management program like Field Pulse. Second is going to be marketing. Third is a worthy rival. Someone in your area, in your industry that does similar things that you work with. I had, I come from an HVAC background and I had multiple businesses in the HVAC industry that would refer me business because they didn't specialize in that and I would refer them business for the same thing. You also need a mastermind group. If there's one thing I know being a business and leadership coach is we have a really bad habit of isolating ourselves and becoming overwhelmed in this feeling of, of being ostracized. So you need to have a mastermind group of people that you can communicate with, bounce ideas off of. And the fifth is a coach. And this is not a, a selfish sale uh, for me because I'm a coach. 
I know that having mentors and having coaches was was one of the catalysts that I had when developing a successful team and successful business. So these five people right here for, or groups, this is really what's going to help you um, kind of elevate yourself in the market and in your business and as a leader. So let's dive into better understanding your business. What is your business? Now you might say plumbing, electrical, HVAC, handyman, mechanic, welder. The reality is you're a solutions company that specializes in those things. This was a mindset shift for me that I drilled into my team every single day. We're not an HVAC company. We're a solutions company that specializes in comfort. And when we approached the market with that mindset and we treated our clients with that in mind, it completely changed everything about our business and it really impacted the brand um, that we were having on the market. So you need to understand that you're a solutions company, period. Whatever you specialize in, great. Let's talk about the golden rule of business. People don't always remember what you did, but they always remember how you made them feel. If you did nothing but change the compass of your business to point towards this rule, it will change everything that you do. It will change the way you answer the phone. It will change the way that you communicate with your team. It will change the way you knock on the door of the customer. Because people don't always remember what you did but they always remember how you made them feel. So the objective is to create the best experience. So how do we set you and your team up for operational excellence? First question, can your business pass the school bus test? If you got ran over by a school bus on the way to work this morning, would your business survive? Could anyone purchase it? Could anyone come in and plug themselves into your company and systematically operate your business to be successful? If your sales leads doubled tomorrow, could you handle it? This is one of those dichotomies of business. We need more sales leads to hire more people, but I wanna hire more people before we generate more sales leads. The solution to either one of those is good systematic operation. You have systems in place, systems of how you're going to sale, systems of how you're going to hire, and systems of how the people in your company are going to operate when they go out into the market every day and perform with excellence. If the size of your team doubled tomorrow, could you handle it? This is why I put this question in here. Every company I talk to has too much work and not enough help. That is kind of the market standard right now. And we get overwhelmed and kind of demotivated because we're having trouble finding people. We need more people. We need more people. The reality is most companies, if they hired or doubled the size of their team tomorrow, the business would go under because they don't understand their operating expenses, they don't have systems of operation in place, they don't have the company, the framework of the business established to be able to plug people into a role, which means you also have roles, responsibilities, expectations, skill set requirements, and compensation packages outlined before you plug a single person into your company. Do you effectively and efficiently transfer information to your team. The largest communication gap in every business is from the person that sells the work to the person that's doing the work. Even if it's the same person, it's the largest communication gap in every business. This is why you need to systematically transfer information. Just like Field Pulse. Field Pulse uh, creates accessibility to information from anybody on the team. So when you sell a job and you create a project, the team now has that information available to them and it's effective and it's efficient. Do you effectively and efficiently communicate with your clients? 
all right? If you are answering the phone or not answering the phone, if you're calling them back or not calling them back, are you doing automated messaging and reminders for your clients? From the time you sell the job or from the time they call to the time you sell the job to the time you do the job, how engaged are you with them? Are you taking that client with you on that journey through the end of the project so they feel involved? This goes back to creating the experience. You have to have a system in place to do that. You have to have a system in place that pops up and gives you notifications and reminders that says, hey, you need to call Mrs. Jones this morning. Hey, we're two weeks out from starting this project. We need to communicate that. What does staging look like? How are you communicating with your clients? How are your technicians communicating with your clients when they knock on the door? How are they having conversations with them about collecting? How are they communicating with them as to what the problems are and what the option-based solutions can be? How are they collecting with confidence? This all goes back to systematic operation. Do you effectively and efficiently operate a schedule? Logistics. Anytime you add a person into your team, logistics becomes a nightmare. Why? Because you're limiting the amount of information that that person has to perform their role efficiently. Again, when you have a system in place that creates accessibility to information and you have a schedule and you have where people can go in and clock into a job and the information to that job is there, it improves communication with the person that sold it and the person that's doing it. And it allows you to better track the operational excellence of your business. Do you and your team collect with confidence on every call? This is a term you heard me use a few seconds ago. Collect with confidence. If there's something I know about being a technician and working with technicians is nobody likes to talk about money. Nobody likes to have a conversation with the client about collecting. So there has to be a systematic way to set the expectation that the technician or yourself is going to collect on every call. So in the initial phone call, I'm going to set that expectation. Mrs. Jones, do you plan to pay with cash check, uh, cash check or credit card today? I'm not asking if they're planning to pay. There's something you have to understand. Every time you walk away from a job and you don't collect, you're financing that job. You are financing their solution. You have to collect and you have to collect with confidence on every call. And when you have a systematic way, when you use field pulse and you go through the option-based solutions, you allow the client to accept or decline what it is that they want to do. They already know what the cost is going to be. That way you or your technician can finish that call, be the hero, solve their problem, and finalize that invoice with that client by collecting every time. It's so simple, but it's not things that we were taught to do. Job costing, looking at operational excellence on the backside of the business. Are you currently job costing? If you're not, you're living in what's called the pit, profit in theory. You bid this job to be at 10%, at 20%, at 30% profit, and when you get done, you're living in the pit. If you're not job costing, you have no idea if you're making money or not. Are you currently tracking performance of your team? People do not want to operate in a participation trophy environment. People want to be rewarded for their performance. You have to be able to track that individually so you can properly award, reward, compensate, acknowledge that individual's performance. Again, that's a system. That's operational excellence of the company. If you answered no, it's what I've said a hundred times already. You lack a system. You lack systems. Now, let me talk about systems real quick because there's a mistake that we make in our minds when setting up systems. We don't take in consideration the human factor. We as leaders and as business owners look at the system and we immediately see ourselves performing that role utilizing this system therefore that sets our expectation 
and we remove the human factor of everybody else. And then we start to manage their failure instead of lead them to success. You have to set yourself and your team up for success. Creating operational excellence. Let me kind of summarize all of this. You need to create a role that is supported by systems, that is supported by leadership. That way you and your technicians can show up every day, plug themselves into a role, and they have all of the resources that they need to create the best experience for the client. That is operational excellence. Creating a system that your team can buy into and implement is so important. So this is on the backside. If you are creating systems in your company, if you're investing in field pulse and your technicians aren't doing it, if they're not implementing the system, it's because you aren't having the right conversations with your team to generate buy-in. Your team has to know two things, why the system exists and how it benefits them. Breaking news, your team doesn't care if it benefits the company or not. It has to benefit them. If you develop a system that benefits them, I can assure you it will benefit the company as well. It ha they have to know why it exists and they have to know how it benefits them. That is how you generate buy-in from your team. Then you just get to manage implementation and that comes with training, time, patience, and experience. Just a quick note, this is everything that we teach in the RVT training, which is repairman versus technician. And this is exactly why that we have partnered with Field Pulse. Because when you look at Field Pulse, it checks so many boxes that solves so many problems with small businesses. And it's all compiled under one program. Everything we've talked about from job costing to logistics to invoicing to sales and proposals to automated messaging to follow-ups everything is involved in this package and when i look at offering something to my clients that solves all of these problems again this is exactly why we've partnered with field pulse so uh thank you for being here um check out the tradesman experience podcast that's all my stuff on there and um michael i'm going to figure out how to uh stop sharing here so we can jump back on all right hey i'm still here <laughs> we got it working perfect cool. uh real quick just want to see if there were any questions uh before we wrap up happy to answer any of them as well as josh i'm sure i mean i kind of nailed it michael it shouldn't be you answer, did you let's did let's face it hey uh joe did you interpret anything that he said as far as uh features or discussions for um for your sales calls of you know kind of scenario did, did that help you with scenarios for solutions yeah no definitely um that's pretty much hits the nail on the head pretty much everything he talked about uh, almost all the companies i'm talking to are lacking in at least one of those categories but usually multiple categories um they either you know don't really have a good grasp on how to um you know bid their jobs to to ensure they're making a profit they're not able to track their metrics um but then also a lot of them are like yeah <laughs> you know if i got in a car wreck or something yeah my business would go under because i'm the only one that has the specialized knowledge or, you know, I, I have to be involved in every single aspect of the business. So, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely I, helps. I think uh, most, unfortunately, a lot of people force themselves to be involved in their business and everything that they do. And they're afraid to let go of scheduling. They're afraid to let go of estimating and invoicing. Um, Josh, we see this a lot in a lot of requests that we get for feature requests where they want to hide all the information from their technicians because they're so scared of technicians running off and starting in business or stealing their clientele or whatever. And that's another discussion for another time. But um, yeah, I was going to say, how, how much of this can do you want to open? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to dive down this rabbit hole. 
No, uh, that, that's that's almost a podcast episode in itself. But um, but we we get those requests, and it frustrates me to no end. And I type this all the time in our internal in our Slack, and then I delete it. Is like technology cannot fix your management issues. So stop looking for all these permissions to hide all this stuff and lock your technicians down and don't let them see pricing and how much you're making. And no, you need to be sharing that information. You need to let your technicians know, you know, things like your overhead costs, what it costs to run the business. So many technicians think that all that money is just going straight to the business owner. And we, we have to, we, you know, we're the middleman, so we have to develop the relationship with our customers. Not that we're coaches like you are, but we at least start the discussion of, are you really running the business the best way that it can be run? And, you know, here's some solutions to help you run your business better. And then someone like Josh, who thankfully we're partnered with, can, Josh has those difficult discussions of walking them down the road of, no, you actually need to be sharing numbers and metrics and expectations with your people, not just sending them on a job and not even letting that technician know the phone number of the customer that they're calling on. Um, that's a feature request we got for our phone system that we're building. Really? So uh, I, I will I'll kind of nutshell some of this. First of all, transparency is important when growing a company and developing a team. Secondly, if you don't trust them, they don't need to be in your company. Thirdly, managers take the mushroom approach with their team, and it's so frustrating, meaning they, they keep them in the dark, they feed them manure, and they expect them to grow. <laughs> and and, and that, that mushroom tactic of management is so common and so popular. Um, if, if I've got somebody in my company, first of all, that I'm afraid is going to steal my clients, I, I don't need them to be there. Secondly, if I have someone on my team that grows and develops in such a manner that outgrows me and they want to start their own business, I don't want them to be considered competition. I want them to be a worthy rival, which means I want them to go into the market doing things right. So they're not undercutting me by $50 an hour because new companies think they have to be the cheapest to grow their businesses, which is psychotic. And so I, I want to shape and mold that individual. The other part is give them a reason to not start their own business. People don't leave jobs, they leave leaders. So if you don't have a healthy culture and you're not an effective leader, they will leave you. It doesn't matter how much information you keep from them. And actually you're just fueling their desire to leave you because they they hate your face because they know that you don't trust them. And I can't believe I've went almost 25 minutes without saying an F word, Michael. This has like, gotta be a new record, but, um, it's like because I like this stuff. These are things and conversations that I have every single day with with, with clients. And, and Daniel, you're right. I have the hard conversations with leaders and business owners and walk them through how to have these conversations. I had a two hour training yesterday with a roofing company on how to properly onboard new people. And at the end of that two hours, the owner told me, he said, for the first time, I realize why hiring on attitude over skill set is more important. I, I went to a, a recent training in uh, Carrollton, I think it was, and uh, I'm about to have him on the podcast, actually. His name is Charles Sarver, and he's a really great guy. And he, um, at one point, was running an entire region of air conditioning companies. I, I, I honestly don't remember which one, but you know, one of these big national companies that just buys up businesses by the dozen, you know? And so um, all of his new onboarding, uh, all of his new hires, he never hired, he preferred not to actually hire HVAC techs. He wanted guys that were working at like the oil change place, but were fantastic about customer service or, you know, really high end spot on waitresses and, and bartenders. He, because he said, I can teach a monkey how to diagnose an HVAC system. It's the skills are really not that hard, but the attitude and the salesmanship that it takes and the the courtship of your clients is he said that I can't teach anybody that. He said, I don't know how to teach that. 
So you, that's what you bring to the table. I'll send you to school. I'll pay for you to go to school to learn the technical side of it. And that those are the people he preferred. He loved. And he said, <laughs> I'll never forget. He said, you got to be careful with this one. If you don't have kids um, walking into a daycare to find the teachers that really love taking care of kids, um, those are great CSRs to have on your team because they understand nurturing conversations with clients when they're on the phone. And, you know, they they have this enduring, you know, um, nature inside of them to care for other people and to care about problems. And, you know, you can't care for any bigger problem than a two year old that drop something that can't pick it up. Right. Well, but that that's in that that's understanding recruiting and you you can't fix stupid and you can't train an attitude very very simple rules of of leadership and i, I know the best install crew that i had were both uh they were both young men uh they were both under 25 and they both come from a factory neither one of them had hvac experience but when i brought them on board train them and then you know probably a year or so later i ended up pairing them together in three years they were hands down one of the best install teams in the area not just my company in the area they were monsters at what they did and i mean but it, it goes back to that that uh simple principle of hiring on attitude um one of our that we said that all the time we hired and fired on attitude that that was our, that was like our golden rule of hiring. We hired and fired on attitude. But if you don't have the culture, you don't have the leadership, and you don't have the operational excellence to provide opportunity for high driving people, they will outgrow you and they will leave you. Which is why culture is so important in a company. And then you get something like Field Pulse that you can plug in, and it complements the culture. And it just drives excellence with with the operations of what everybody else is doing, and it simplifies the whole process. Why wouldn't you want that? But if you're try if, if you're again if you're if you're a mushroom manager, and, and you're you're trying to operate and lead your company that way, you are the limiting factor in your business. the 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 biggest problem in your company is you. The good news is the best solution in your company is you. If you are the limiting factor in your business, you cannot blame your team, you cannot blame the market, you cannot blame the systems, and you cannot blame your customers. It is absolutely you. You get out of your own way and you start growing and developing and implementing things like this, you will actually attract people that want to be a part of your company. You will attract people that want to come work for you and represent your brand and go out into the market every day and create operational excellence through creating the best experience for the client. So mic drop, Michael, mic drop. <laughs> yeah. So no, you guys are great. Perfect. I appreciate this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, that was awesome. I think that's the, that's kind of the perfect way to, to, um, to end it. Uh, I think this was super educational. Even for, I think I'll tell you this, Josh, every time we talk, you make me want to start my own HVAC business. Honestly, <laughs> you get me, you get me fired up and motivated. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap us up. Uh, I would like to thank you, Josh, uh, for the insightful contributions, uh, making this uh, webinar educational and exceptional. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you and it was great having you uh, present and giving your knowledge uh, and insights. Uh, we hope everyone that you guys found today's discussion on operational ex excellence valuable, uh, that you gain new perspectives uh, and some actionable insights. Um, just want to express my gratitude to our partner, Josh, with the Tradesman Experience uh, for his hard work uh, and support in helping make this webinar a success. Uh, thank you guys again for joining us. I uh, look forward to connecting in future webinars and events and discussions. And that's it. Take care, everyone. Thank you, guys. You guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thanks, Michael.